Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. And I will be sharing my time with the member from Edmonton Manning. I'm honored to have the opportunity to speak to this very important opposition motion on housing. Canada does have a housing crisis. Every day, citizens from my riding and across Canada come to me with heartbreaking stories on the challenges they face in putting a roof over their head. Many tell me they can no longer afford to stay in their homes. Others share that they can't find anywhere at all to live. I hear from young families who are forced to live far from their places of work because it's all they can find, and young people who are losing hope that they will never be able to own a house of their own. Nearly one in 10 Canadians experience hidden homelessness. One in seven Canadian households cannot find decent housing without spending 30% or more of their income. And in my riding in the greater Toronto area, that number is drastically worse. The average Toronto household costs over 850,000, where Canada's average is 562,000 with many Toronto buyers taking nearly 75% of their household income to cover home ownership costs. The blatant truth is that there is not enough housing available and the housing that is, is simply too expensive. The critical shortage of housing and the corresponding skyrocketing of housing prices is a serious problem that is getting worse and not one that will fix itself. Economists at the big banks have been increasingly sounding the alarm over Canada's housing market. Big bank economists don't typically use strong language on any topic. So when they do, we must take note and treat it with the severity that it deserves. In February, economists at the National Bank highlighted the warning signs of widespread price surges and vulnerable borrowers with high debt and uninsured mortgages. A Royal Bank economist in late March stated that a policy response was required to address a housing market that hasn't had an overheating of this scope since the late 1980s. This position was further reinforced by a Bank of Montreal economist who stated policymakers need to act immediately to respond to the housing fire that Canada is currently living through. Canada's national housing affordability crisis requires a comprehensive federal approach combined with a sense of urgency that takes concrete action to implement it. Today's Opposition Day motion calls on the government to do just that. This crisis in Canada is a complex issue, but today I'd like to focus on three main areas that I think should be considered in any federal government approach. Tax structure changes, including addressing vacant and non-resident foreign ownership, rampant housing speculation, and money laundering. Employment and the quality, not just quantity, of jobs. And longer-term thinking around the total cost of ownership of housing and how targeted initiatives could make housing more affordable while also achieving our national goals around environment and climate change. What is taxed? how it's taxed, and the information and documentation that's provided in support of those taxes are important tools that a federal government can use to influence the foundations of economics, including the housing market. Many of the housing market issues are associated with shortages in supply, with renters being disproportionately affected. Renter households are four and a half times more likely to be in housing need largely due to a severe shortage in rental properties. But often the shortage is not because properties are being, but are because properties are being left vacant rather than there not being enough properties. One such example is the explosion in the use of properties for short-term rentals, such as Airbnbs. There are significant tax advantages that currently, perhaps inadvertently, incentivize owners of vacant properties to use them for this purpose, rather than as housing for longer term renters. While tourism is certainly a key component of our economy, the ability for families to secure long term rentals for housing must also be prioritized. Perhaps if the tax structures were altered to, as a minimum level, level the playing field between these two usages, perhaps more property owners would choose to offer their properties for long term rentals, increasing the 
available supply. Also affecting the supply of shelter is the extent to which owned properties are simply being left vacant. Many of these properties are non-resident foreign owned. A temporary freeze on this type of ownership would be a substantive measure towards increasing the supply. Furthermore, a review of the tax conditions on properties that remain vacant for extended periods would also uh, be something important to look into. The real estate market has been extensively exploited by money laundering, further compounding the problem of both the supply and the cost of housing. It's estimated that $47 billion is laundered annually across Canada with a significant portion, some estimates as high as 66% of that, being in the real estate market. Nearly half of all real estate companies are not complying with key aspects of FinTrack anti-money laundering regimes, and Canadian authorities are failing to prosecute these financial crimes. Compliance and enforcement of Canada's anti-money laundering must be a priority. Additionally, the introduction of beneficial ownership to increase transparency would be a significant measure that would increase availability of housing supply and in turn reduce housing prices. Finally, tax changes that would temper the rampant speculation in the housing market should also be explored. The purchase of properties for the sole purpose of flipping is contributing to the rapid price increases. Perhaps that practice of flipping should be viewed in the context of a business operation and not as a principal resident. Clear residential requirements may be including rules that disallow multiple pres principal residents within a certain period or time frame without supporting justification, such as a move for work, could all be important tax changes that should be considered, again, to increase the housing supply and cool the drastic pricing increases. While cost of housing may be a critical piece in the accessibility to a place Canadians can call home, it's not the only one. A steady and reliable income is as important on the path to home ownership. With over 30% of Canadians precariously employed, addressing the housing crisis must also include measures to increase not only the quantity, but the quality of jobs. The last area that must be considered in addressing housing affordability is the standard and quality of available housing. The cost of a home is more than just the purchase price. It's also the annual recurring cost of heating, cooling, maintaining it, and so much more. Significant technological advances offer much greater energy efficiency, lower carbon footprints, and greater resilience against climate change events. Yet, building codes lag far behind and government housing investments do not demand compliance with these highest of standards. While a tax incentive to retrofit existing properties may be beneficial, the advantages of all new builds meeting the highest possible standards and the corresponding contribution to home affordability should not be overlooked. The national housing crisis must be urgently addressed. It requires real action to review detrimental tax treatments, address money laundering and rampant speculation and support long-term environmental and sustainable thinking. Today's opposition motion puts forward important actions that will give more people a real chance at securing a decent and affordable roof over their head and in turn, secure Canada's future. I urge everyone in this house to support this critical motion. Thank you, Madam Speaker.